Good morning, Life Point Church. How are you this morning? Please stand with us. So this morning is the last service Life Point will have. Well, technically, second to last service Life Point will have in 2020. I'm glad you're here to join us in taking the year out. I have some encouragement here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. It says, you are salt of the earth. In verse 14, it says, you are light. I'm sorry, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. It goes on to say, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That seems to be the theme right now with where we're at. We our salt. We are light. We are the ambassadors of the Christ, Jesus. So we're going to get into the mood this morning. We're going to praise the Father, and I want to encourage you to shine some light both in here and when you walk out the door this morning. Let's put our hands together. another life no more sorrow and no more night you're the light let it shine now let it shine now we're burning bright cause we're not ashamed we got a world to illuminate you're the light let it shine now let it shine now Nothing can stand against us. Nothing can stand against us. Our praise will break the darkness as we declare your kingdom's here because our God is for us. We're living in the promise and we Give us the courage and the strength to be light in the darkness, salt to the earth, Lord God. Oh, let's shine a light. Shine a light, 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 shine a light.
and who loves, who enjoys praising the Lord. Woo! Yeah? Come on. Hands together. Come on. Here in your light we find what makes us come alive, a sacrifice of praise. A city on a hill, surrendered to your will, your glory on display. Your glory on display. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised, Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your love, your love, a force of grace, consuming every space. It's uncontainable. You're coming like a flood. Our hearts are filling up. All things are possible. Yeah. All things are possible. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We live the name of Jesus. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We live the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We live the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Awesome in this place. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. friends, Lord, for a rich life,
Father, as the year's coming close to an end, I'm thinking back, and there's been a lot of trouble in this year, but Father, there's been a lot of good. You've been good, Father. Through it all, you've been good, Father. <laughs> Your love, Father God, is never failing. Your mercies, they do endure forever. Your grace abounds. You're so good, Lord. So good. Yes, Lord.
When he, he wrote this, it's verse 1. He says, You, God, are my God, and earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land when there is no water. And I love this part. It says, I have seen you in the sanctuary, and I have beheld your power and your glory, because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you, and I will praise you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied in the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Come on. That's good. And I, love the, I love verse 2 because David says, I have beheld your power and your glory, even in the midst of the desert, even in the midst of, of chaos and confusion. Uh, does this sound familiar to anybody? This is the last Sunday of 2020. <laughs> in the midst of chaos and, and, and desperation, David says, I've seen your glory. I know that you're powerful and I will praise you because of it. And that's good. As we enter into this new year, as we close out what many would call the worst year of, of our lifetime, definitely mine, God is still on the throne. Yes, he is. He's still worthy of all of the praise and all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the adoration. Yes, yes he is. We serve a God who is still good despite 2020. Come on. Did anybody experience a miracle in 2020? Did, did anybody experience a healing in 2020? Come on. Come on now. A lot of people will say that this year was a waste, but let me tell you something. This year was not a waste. God was still moving just like he was years past and just like he will do in the next year and the year after that and the year after that and the year after that. And we serve a God who is good. And if there is nothing else to hold on to, if there is nothing else to find encouragement in, it's that we serve a God who loves us, who is there for us, and who is always going to hold on to us that we can anchor our, ourselves off to him. That's good, church. Come on. Let's give him a hand clap. Come on. And I'm excited for what God's going to do in 2021. And I'm thankful for what he did in 2020. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that even in, in what many would call a throwaway year, a, a scrap year, something where a lot of people would just say, let's just forget it. God, you still moved. You still worked. You still made yourself known. Lord, and we can hold on to you in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the confusion, in the desert, just like David, we can hold on to you because we know of your power, we know of your glory. But we give you everything that we have. Father, we worship you this morning. 
Father, we look to you because you are where our help comes from. Lord, we, we take some, some time, these moments, to just say you're worthy. Lord, you are worthy of, of all of the praise, all of the honor, all of the glory, because you are so good to us. Father, we, we ask your, your blessing over the rest of our time together as we, as we close out this year, and, and Lord, as we look forward to the next season, we're believing for even greater, mighty moves in this place, in this community, in this nation, in this world. Father, we are looking to you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. Can we give the Lord another hand clap? Come on. So good. You know, it's funny. People, people tell me all the time, you should just calm down. You got too much energy. Come on. We serve a God like, like the one we serve. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, um, so we do have a, a few announcements, a few things. Um, and uh, we, we, you know, are starting up a new year. It's going to be some, uh, there's going to be some incredible things going on. Uh, we actually have a, a new uh, adults class um, as we take a break from United. So uh, on Wednesday, January 6th at 630, we're going to be doing two classes. One is Laugh Your Way to a Bear, Better Marriage. Um, how many people are already signed up? Just curious. Ooh, get on the church app. Come on now. No, um, so uh, if you're a married couple um, or, you know, maybe engaged or, or anything really and, and you want to build uh, a better marriage, um, this is an amazing class. It's, it's taught by Mark Gunger and uh, really, really incredible time uh, together. We do have cap limits, uh, though, so I've been told we're capping it off at around 30. Uh, that's about as much as we can do with social distancing and things, so make sure that you get on the church app uh, or the church website on events and uh, check that out and sign up for that. We also have emotionally healthy relationships, and that'll be up in the Mingus room, also known as the couch room. Um, and so you can sign up for that if you are a single person um, or you're just looking at, you know, how to make yourself better uh, in, in relationships uh, as you do that. That has an even smaller cap of about 12 to 15 people. So make sure that you get on the church app or the church website and sign up because space is very limited. Um, as we start this new year as well, we're going to be entering into a fast, so uh, begin to just prepare your hearts. Um, we do this at the beginning of every year, and um, just, just prepare your hearts for, for what God would do in 2021. Uh, how many people believe in God for an amazing 2021 this upcoming year? Come on, come on. Yep. We are, and, and it starts, the best way to start that off is by fasting and praying and just seeking out what the Lord would want from you personally, from what he wants from us as a church family, and uh, so it'll be a great time um, that week that we'll be doing that. Um, as always, offering will be taken at the end of the service. You can also find uh, any staff member. We'll make sure to get that uh, to you. There are a few ways to give. You can give online. Uh, you can give um, through the mail. And uh, you can also give on our church app as well. Uh, anything that I miss, anything um, that, that, that I'm missing in here, you can check on the church app. We try to keep that updated, uh, try to send out some notifications. We also don't blow up your phone. We're not trying to, to be the, the crazy ex-girlfriend or anything, blowing up your phone and going crazy. Uh, <laughs> and maybe, maybe that was the... It's fine. I'll, I'll keep it going. And so, um, so yeah, anything that we're missing, um, you can check the church app or um, it, that. Or you can follow us on social media. Um, all of our updates come through there as well. You can follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube, any of that good stuff. Um, well, I think it's time uh, to uh, get into the Word. And I'm super excited. Man, how many people are thankful for an amazing pastoral staff? Come on. So good. I, I, you know, 
I get to I get to share this pulpit. I also get to share on Wednesday night with some incredible men. And um, in, in you know, in the absence of, of Pastor Mike, as he's uh, you know recovering still and and taking some more time, man, it's incredible to have staff members um, and pastors who can come communicate the word in a strong way. And today uh, we have Reverend uh, Jeremy Brinkerhoff. He called me Reverend last time, so I get to return the favor there. And, and man, Jeremy's awesome. So can't wait to hear you bring it, man. Well, good morning. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Brother <laughs> Seaton. Always, always lovely. And uh, yes, never lose the energy, but you do have some explaining to do. Uh, you ha- uh, 20, he got married in 2020, then he called it the worst year ever. And then he said he's got an ex-girlfriend who blows up his phone. So I, I don't know, man. I would not want to be in his shoes this afternoon as he goes home. But we do love him desperately, desperately. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, and, uh, and we, uh, we do uh, just appreciate all the uh, incredible things as this year has unfolded, just the faithfulness in, uh, in so many areas, in faithfulness in giving, faithfulness in praying for one another, faithfulness in united groups as people have continued to, uh, to meet via Zoom, meet in person, and then also just the way that, that uh, people have come alongside each other has been incredible. So uh, God is on the move. He is moving. And uh, today, we're going to look at what it is to go all in. We're going to look at what it is to go all in, especially as we go into a new year. Where do we need to put our, uh, how do we position ourselves? What do we do in order to really put all our eggs in God's basket, taking ourselves out of the world and putting us into his hands in faith and in trust? We're going to look at that in just a little bit, but let us start. Uh, would you please stand with me? We're going to continue reading through Psalms 119, uh, and we've been doing this as a church family. It is important that we just kind of meditate on his word and that we read it together, and so this is a part of that. So would you please join me? Oh, how I love your instructions. I think about them all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are my constant guide. Yes, I have more insight than my teachers, for I am always thinking of your laws. I am even wiser than my elders, for I have kept your commandments. I have refused to walk on any evil path, so that I may remain obedient to your word. I haven't turned away from your regulations, for you have taught me well. How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Awesome. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's just open in a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you today and uh, we are amazed and grateful. And Lord, we, uh, we do, we place our our full trust, and our full hope in you. And God, I pray that you would give us those tools by which we can do that. And God, so many times it seems that we are in a place where we're not sure entirely what to do or how to, how to move, but Lord, that is what we have you for. You said you will be a, a light for our path, and God, we, we ask for those next steps, those next things that we can do in our lives to bring us to a spot where we can share your light, share your love, share your hope, with the world around us, based on the fact that we are grounded in those things ourselves. Lord, we pray for Pastor Mike, we pray for Elisa, we pray for all of those who have been affected by this nasty virus. Lord, we pray that your hand would be upon them. We pray that you would be over every family who has lost a loved one. Lord, as a result of of, uh, COVID, but also just in general, this, this, uh, this recent season, God, I pray your comfort, we pray your peace, over those homes. We pray for an end to this thing. We pray that it would come swiftly. We pray for a restoration, but Lord, that we may not forget the lessons that we were to have learned. Lord, we pray and we position ourselves before and you ask, Lord, those things what you are tr- that you are trying to get at in our hearts and our lives, may those lessons become very, very real to our hearts and our minds so that we may grow closer to you and that we may have our understanding founded in your word. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So who here has already exchanged or returned Christmas gifts? 
Just a couple? Oh, a few? Okay, yeah, I'm, my, my hand is up there too. Like the day after I'm, I'm on Amazon, like how do I return this thing? But uh, we, we are used to this thing of exchanging gifts, returning gifts. And uh, it's, it's funny though, like when I'm talking to my kids and they're, they're having to, we usually go through this purge right before Christmas. Like, okay, let's get rid of all the old stuff. It's, new stuff's coming. And then they, they like, hey, I really want this thing, Dad. I'm like, I mean, it's just stuff. It's just stuff. You can't take it with you. That's a phrase that we use, right? Until it comes to someone taking our stuff. <laughs> they're like, no, 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 that, that's my stuff. They're like, hey, you can't take it with you. Well, I don't care. I have it now. So it's a funny thing, this, this idea of exchanging and uh, when we give gifts, and, and Pastor Mike even talked about it a few weeks ago, where it's, it's, it's flipped, right? So Jesus' birthday comes, we celebrate it, we come to his birthday party, and we're like, so where's my gift? And it's actually a party for him. And there's, there's this, this bizarre thing that happens because we truly have nothing to offer in this, this exchange, this, this thing of like, okay, I can bring something to you, and you're going to give something to me. We have nothing to offer offer in this exchange for salvation, in this exchange of a relationship, a right relationship with um, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we even saw um, this uh, uh, through the cardboard testimonies. I don't know if you were able to, uh, to be here for that service. If you're not, I would encourage you to go online and take a look at that. The cardboard testimonies were, were such an incredible testament to this thing of exchange because person after person came out here, and on one side it, it had how they were, what they were like before they met Christ. And then as they flipped that, that is that exchange. Man, I'm giving you this, this thing in my past and I'm exchanging it for your glory. And as they flipped that sign, it was that, that essence of now, this is how God has changed me, renewed me, restored me so that I can live fully in his, uh, in his ways. So this thing of exchange we're familiar with, but I think that we're, we're not very good at. So I want to take a look first at, at what it is that, that we're being offered, for one, and also the problem that we have with living sort of this, this split life, this dual personality, if you will, in many cases. But then I want to then take the, the second portion of this and really look at uh, a story from the Bible, what they did to go all in with God, and then what we can learn from those things. So if you would... We're going to turn to uh, Matthew 19:21. It's a very familiar um, passage to many people. And there's a, a rich man who comes to Jesus and he wants to, to become a disciple. He says, I- I'm here, I- I'm ready to go all in. And that's great, and that's wonderful. And it's like our stuff. And it came down to this guy's stuff. It's, it's wonderful when it's someone else. When it's us, it becomes a little too personal. So he says, I'm ready to go all in. So Jesus replies to him in verse 21. He says, if you want to be perfect, Jesus said to him, go and sell your belongings and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard that command, he went away grieving because he had many possessions. Treasure in heaven is what he's offered. This guy can't see treasure in heaven. He can see treasure on earth. The beautiful exchange is being offered. He says, I'm all in. Jesus says, are you really? Okay, now expose, ex- he exposes this guy's heart, and this guy's not able to, to truly go all in with everything that is being offered to him, even though it's really a much, much better deal than he can even comprehend at this time. In, uh, in the second service or between services, we have an opportunity today. We're going to be baptizing uh, a man from our congregation, and this, this is an illustration. That's one of the beautiful things about immersion and baptism is that it symbolizes this deal of being all in. And when we go and we immerse someone in the, the waters of baptism, you don't come out the other side like damp. You don't come out slightly wet and you're not sure like, okay, are they dry? Are they wet? No, when, when we immerse someone, when you are all in the water, you come out and you are soaked. You are completely immersed in that thing. And there's also this beautiful picture within baptism of marriage, another all in type of commitment. When we talk about taking on someone's name and taking on the name of Jesus Christ, we baptize them into the name of Jesus Christ. It is this picture again of of marriage and this idea when we take our marriage vows, we are saying in sickness, in health, for better, for worse, rich or poor, forsaking all others 
forsaking all others. Man, I am all in. Whatever it is, I am all in with you. And we see in, in scriptures how Christ has this analogy of marriage for his relationship with his bride, the church, with us as uh, his sons and daughters coming into a marriage relationship uh, with him. And so with these kinds of all-in things, and immersion and, and, uh, and just the, the way that, that we go all in, we must have a propensity to sort of not be there. If, if we see through scripture time and time again, this is not about just a generation ago. These are things that are meant for us to glean something from as well. These are human conditions. We are humans and we unfortunately have these same exact uh, desires and habits and things that, that, that have a tendency to drag us down and put us in two different camps. Um, a while back, uh, I had come to, uh, I had gone to a pastor's retreat and I was, I was brand new as far as uh, having my credentials as a pastor. And so I didn't know a whole lot of the, the guys there, but there was this opportunity. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to go to this deal and, uh, and just kind of get to know some people from uh, around the state. And so we went up to Lake Powell and everything was paid for. Someone was generous enough to, to, uh, to pay my way there. So we went up to Lake Powell it is beautiful. If you have not had a chance to get up there, it is one of uh, the most incredible places that you can visit here in Arizona. Um, so we go up to Lake Powell. We have a houseboat, and uh, we go through our time, and we're coming back to the dock, and uh, I've got all my stuff kind of on one end of the boat, and they pull up next to the dock, and they tether it, but it's, it's kind of like in the middle of the boat. And I toss over my sleeping bag, and, and I have uh, a couple of things. And I, I didn't really fully commit to going to the dock, so I kind of did one of these things, not realizing that it was tethered way over here. And so then I start doing like this kind of deal, and I'm, I'm not fully here, and I'm not fully here, and I'm realizing that I'm about to be fully here, and I kind of like toss my stuff, and I make this desperate attempt, whack my toe on the, the tie down that was one down, break the thing, I'm now backwards into the water, the boat's like still following uh, far away, many, many people laughing. I'm like, this is a wonderful first impression. Like, hey guys, I'm, I'm new to the camp. They're like, yeah, you're not one of us. So these, this is really a, a, that illustration. If we have one foot one place and one or another, we're truly not either place. And we're in a precarious position where now we're subject to to faltering, to falling, to becoming immersed in the wrong way. And, and we really can have this, this thing of not really fully being in either place, which is a dangerous, dangerous spot to be in. Look at James uh, 1, 5 through 8, if you would. James 1, 5 through 8. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For the doubter is like the surging sea driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. An indecisive man is unstable in all of his ways. Just like I was unstable in that moment of being split between here and there, this, this picture, this thing of, of God, again, offering something. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. And God gives to all generously and without criticizing. I mean, what an incredible thing that he is offering us without criticizing. Well, with, like there's, there's this thing of, of us typically wanting to go to God and we're like, ah, oh, man, he's probably going to be like, oh, seriously, you? I don't know. Should I give you? Should I not? He, he's, he's even looking at you with such love and with such compassion. He's saying, look, I'm ready to give this. I'm standing right here. I have this thing. But then when we have this, this idea of doubt, I mean, tossed by the wind, then it says that um, uh, we should not expect to receive anything. He, he's, we're sort of, our, our own indecision is blocking that. It's not withholding it from us. We're not able to receive it because of our indecision. This thing of doubt, when we doubt, it is this indecisive sort of thing. Is it really worth it? Should I really put all my, my efforts over here? Should I re is God really good enough? Can I trust him with this aspect of my life? There's that doubt, that indecisiveness that comes in our lives. When we have this, like this rich young ruler, 
wait a second, I, I can't quite see what's on the other side. I don't exactly know what he's asking. What does treasure in heaven look like? Well, I know what this is. I'm going to stand over here. I'm going to keep this thing that I, I know uh, I can hold and touch and see. So in Deuteronomy, we have a very clear, very stark contrast of what is being offered and what the consequences are. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, 15. I love it. So uh, in, in the last few weeks uh, and, and months, we've been going through um, the Bible. We have this Bible engagement project, and we've been walking through uh, this whole thing of, of the, the beginning stories of the Bible, and now we're about to get into to Exodus the next few weeks, so it's going to be awesome. I encourage you to come into this. This thing of, of renewing the covenant and choosing life the Israelites are going into a land that they're about to possess, and now there is this command to, uh, to choose life and what is being set before them. So what do we see here in Deuteronomy 30, 15? He says, see today, I have set before you life and prosperity, death and adversity. For I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, statues, statutes, and ordinances, so that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God may bless you in the land you are entering to possess. See today, I have set before you, this is back in 15, see today, I have set before you life and prosperity, death and adversity. Those are two very different things. Life and prosperity death and adversity. These are the things that are being offered to us. These are the two areas of life and prosperity, death and adversity that God is holding out. He's saying, you, you have the power to choose. He's given us this thing of choice to be able to say, yes, I want to put myself here and I want to put to death these things over here. But then it is, it is our choice to either do that or to not. And so in Romans um, stick with me here as we hop around. But uh, in Romans, we see this, this played out uh, as well. Uh, Beth, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. It's always good to sing when you're lost because then it just comes back to you. It's amazing. Romans one twenty five. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served something created instead of the creator who is blessed forever. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served something created instead of the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. We have this thing in us where even though it is very clear what he has set before us, life and prosperity, death and adversity. Time and time again, it is very easy for us to exchange the truth of who God is, the truth that we see in his word, that he is everlasting, that his covenants are everlasting, that his promises are everlasting, that what he said is true. And we begin to exchange all that, even though we know better, for the lie that the world has something better to offer us that there's more freedom, that there's more uh, enjoyment, that there's more stuff in this area than what God is offering us with truth, with life, with prosperity by following his commands, by following his words, by following his truth. And it's interesting to me when, when we look at this, the exchange of the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served something created instead of the creator and I think, I don't know if it's, uh, I, I grew up in the church and if it's part of that thing of, of uh, the, the flannel boards and story graphs and all these kind of things of, of, uh, of what an idol is and what created is. So I, I tend to take my mind to those places of, well, I don't have a statue uh, on my shelf that I worship. And I think of those as the created things, like uh, something that man created. But what he's talking about in general they serve something created. We are created beings. We are created by our Heavenly Father. And very often it is easy, and we see this in the world play out all the time, that people can become very enamored with other people. 
with the wisdom of other people, with the advice of other people who are not actually seeking God through his word. They're not seeking God through prayer and through meditation and seeking him every single day on their face with humility. And so people begin to put and misplace their trust in things that are created, other human beings. And I think especially in, in this year, I, that, that has become very, very clear as people look toward uh, things of, of science and things of, of uh, even a, a political structure to bring about peace, to bring about hope, to bring about life. And the bizarre thing is, is that um, we begin to, to really uh, sort of shift our thinking and we can very easily become a part of that, of that errant belief. And I'm not saying that, that this, these are not tools, these are not things that God has given us to be able to alleviate certain aspects and to, to speak into certain aspects of our life here on earth. But the problem comes is when we begin to place our peace I, with, the, with the vaccine. I will not have peace until the vaccine. I will not have more hope about this until the vaccine. Or let's say, let's say tomorrow there is actually a cure for coronavirus. Not even just a vaccine, but a cure for coronavirus. Let's say there's a cure for cancer tomorrow. Let's say that there's a magic pill that makes your in-laws all get along in the holidays. <laughs> all those things, even if they were to come about by tomorrow morning, they would not begin to even bring us a quarter of a step closer to the one thing that truly is our ailment, and that is separation from God. And the problem is, is when we have all these things, and when we get to, 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 to put one foot in this camp of like, you know what, well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have peace only if I have this thing. Or I'll feel financially secure when. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to trust God more if. Maybe, maybe if I had more, I would be able to do this. We begin to really place ourselves in this camp that is not trusting God, that's not putting everything, we're not all in with him, because we've now established that only these things can bring peace, only these things can bring me joy, only these things that are material and that are, that are from created beings are going to bring about hope and trust in my life. And it, it really brought to mind this morning as I was tossing and turning that, uh, that a lot of times we're like, we're like the cat that is chasing the laser pointer. And the laser pointer moves around and we get over there and we pounce on it, only to find that it's, it's not really an object. And then it moves in, oh, now we're chasing over here. And we get it just to find that it's moving again. And we, we tend to do this in our hearts, in our minds, and the way that we, we put ourselves in different camps of where we place our hope. And so we're not all in. We're here and we're a little bit there and we're doing the splits and it's uncomfortable and it's not where we should be. So what do we do about this? How can we begin to go all in with Christ? How can we go all in with who we are so that we do not get tossed back and forth? So we're in this area where we're able to bring this thing that he's offering, where we're able to receive the gift that he is offering us of wisdom, of peace, of prosperity. Well, I'd like to look, um, and this will be the, the section that we camp out on on the rest of our time here. In Luke, Luke 1, forty-six. This is in an incredible passage of scripture. This is Mary's praise. Mary sings this song as she continues to be, um, just as it's continued to reveal to her, as God reveals things to her heart, to her mind about the child that she is carrying, all these things that are being brought about in her life personally, and then for this thing that he is doing for the world through the birth of Jesus Christ. And Mary said, my soul proclaims, my soul magnifies the greatness of the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior, because he has looked with favor on the humble condition of his slave. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed because the mighty one has done great things for me. 
and his name is holy. His mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear him. He has done a mighty deed with his arm. He has scattered the proud because of the thoughts of their hearts. He has toppled the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has satisfied the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, mindful of his mercy, just as he spoke to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. So there's some things that I want to pull out from this incredible passage of Scripture. There's a lot that Mary packs into these, these few short verses. Mary said, my soul proclaims, my soul magnifies the greatness of the Lord. This thing of soul, her, her soul, the seed of her affections and her will, is now bringing glory, is magnifying, making bigger, proclaiming the greatness of who God is. So this, this very core of who she is is where she is magnifying God from. Her heart is in this place of saying, I will bring glory to the name of God. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. And there's, there's a couple of, of camps of thought on soul and spirit. In this passage, I would say that there's, there's definitely a... Um, uh, an argument to be made that, that there is a distinction, that there's this distinction between soul and spirit, that the spirit is, is even more core that informs her soul, that then animates her body. So at, at, even deeper than her soul, proclaiming and magnifying, her spirit is rejoicing because God is her savior. And what an incredible proclamation, what a, an incredible declaration for Mary, the mother of Jesus. She said that God is her savior. She has the savior of the world at this point inside of her, and yet she is, she is being able to say, and she's rejoicing in God, her savior. So these things of our soul magnifying our spirit rejoicing in the fact of God being our savior. Our soul, as she's saying, my soul proclaims the greatness of God. He, her soul is proclaiming the greatness of who he is. The greatness of who he is. And her spirit is rejoicing in God my savior, what he has done. So when we begin to put that together, who is God? We find it in his word. We find it through, uh, through our experiences with him as he guides us, as he directs us, as we place those markers in our life of what God has done to bring us through hard times. Who he is begins to put our soul in that place of magnifying God. Our spirit has rejoiced what he has done for us. When we begin to think and we begin to meditate on the fact that our lives were junk that they were worth nothing until we had our Savior come into our lives, transform us from the inside out. When those things become a part of who, what our spirit is from the very inside of our being, begins to inform our soul, our will, our mind, our emotions, and then transmits into uh, our physical body, that begins to proclaim that we are all in. We can make a stand for being all in because now everything within us says, yes, I proclaim and magnify God as my Savior. And then with this, her body, she's also given her body. I mean, what, what, what bigger commitment could you ask for than to carry an alien baby inside you? I mean, this is, this is crazy. She has someone from the heavens in her body, like that is, that's all in. She is all in. She has given everything she could. She has Jesus Christ in her. As a virgin, she is able to carry this child around. She has given her body, her soul, her spirit to the very things because God came to her and said, Mary, this is what I'm requiring of you. This is what I'm requesting of you. And she said, okay, take it all, have it all. She also calls herself a slave, a slave. Even though God brings an incredible word to her about how she is highly favored among women, she does not use that as leverage against other people. She then says, here I am, I am your slave. She puts herself in the lowliest of positions because she again realizes who she is in the kingdom of heaven. 
in Luke 2, uh, 54 and 55, there's this thing also of, no, I take that back, 219, bear with me. Uh, Luke 2, 19, I wanted to draw upon this before we go back to that other passage I just mentioned. It said, but Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. A few weeks ago, I talked about Rebecca and Jacob, and Rebecca received this incredible promise, this prophecy of what was happening inside her. Two humans wrestling and trying to fight it out. Rebecca took things into her own hands, and we talked about that then. But here we have Mary, in contrast, who hides these things in her heart and meditates on them. There is incredible faith and trust even though Mary could have, have tried to, to force the hand and, and, and like, okay, I have the Savior inside me. Now what am I going to do to make sure that he's elevated and all these kind of things? Like, she, she actually makes sure that she takes it, she internalizes it, she meditates on that and allows God to work. She allows God to begin to weave those things together for his purposes, for his glory. That is probably one of the most difficult tasks for us is to let those things go and allow God to work. I want to do God's work for him. (laughs) Let me at it. I can do it. But this thing of time, and this thing of how he weaves all these things together, that we have have no idea. So for us to place ourselves in that position of slave so that he is the one giving us uh, those those, those things of, of his commands and his precepts that we talked about in, uh, in Psalm 119 this morning that we read. So then also, in, and back in uh, Luke 1, 55 and 56, sorry, 54 through 56, Mary's proclaiming, he has helped his servant Israel, mindful of his mercy, just as he spoke to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. God has done exactly what he said he would do. This is that thing of her recalling the promises of God, the things that he has set in motion over time to bring about this very event that is happening in her life. She's able to look back upon those promises. She's meditating on them, and now she's staking her, her uh, she's putting herself in that position saying, you know what? If he said he's going to do these things, I know he will because he's done it before. So how do we go all in? We remind ourselves of who he is. We remind ourselves of what he has done. We allow ourselves to be committed to him fully, even if it requires the use of our our physical body. We hide these things in our heart. We meditate on them. His word has been given to us. We have such an incredible opportunity because we do not have to hide the word physically underground. We don't have to go into these different places and and try to meet in secret. We have the opportunity to meditate and and begin to, to take this word in, to memorize it, to hide it in our hearts. So we should do that. And then we remind ourselves that God has done exactly what he said he would do. So as we come to the end of a tumultuous year, as we come to the end of 2020 and all the weird, bizarre things that have happened, we have an opportunity to go into 2021 to discern, oh yeah, that's exactly what I want to put everything. I don't want to straddle one here and one here. I want to go all in in 2021. I want what he has for me because when it comes right down to it, Life on prosperity will beat out death and adversity every single time. So let us make that declaration with our hearts, with our minds today that we can close a chapter on a crazy year, but ultimately we want to close the book on sin and death and destruction. And we want to open up our lives. We want to open up a new book with the pages that are filled with his glory, with his promises, 
with his answers to our prayers. If you have not yet made that decision to begin to make that leap, to place your faith and your trust in Jesus, there's no better place to be. There's no better place to be. There are testimonies after testimonies after testimonies of people that have made that decision. And they can tell you that it may not be an easy life, but it is a worthwhile life. So if you are in that spot today, please see one of our pastoral staff, see me up at the front. Afterward, we'd love to talk with you, to pray with you about what it looks like to go all in with Jesus. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord God, we thank you. We thank you again for your word, for the amazing thing that you have for our lives, that you desire to give us life and prosperity. And God, we, we ask that as you hold those two things out, that we would not be like those who are tossed by the wind, that indecision would not be what is said about us, but Lord, that we have gone all in that we have placed ourselves fully trusting in you to use us where you see fit. God, we commit ourselves into your hands. And Lord, we, we do want to go into this new year resolved to be men and women who chase after you, who see you in your magnificence, and who magnify your name and who proclaim your goodness to everyone around us, God. We love you. We thank you for everything you've done. May we not forget your promises. May we not spend half of our time in one spot in the world and another with you, trying to figure out how to walk a fine line between the two. Will we commit ourselves fully to you. It's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, would you stand? And I just thank you so much for, for being here today. Uh, again, there are um, lots of different things happening. I know that almost every day things change. So uh, just, just, just be nice. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, as you go today, uh, just, just go rejoicing, knowing that God is who he says he is, that he is on the throne, that he sees you, he cares about you, and he wants you to be with him. Thank you so much, and you are dismissed. You can give on the way out the door if that is how you desire to give. <laughs>